What better to talk about when it's cold like this than a semi-tropical plant like citrus, Stan? Tell us a little bit about your, your citrus operation. Well, I have always been interested in citrus, even as a child, and um, got my first citrus tree, uh, Satsuma Mandarin, back in the mid-80s and planted it at my back door, and it grew and was successful and started producing fruit. And so folks saw it, the meter reader, the gas man, uh, man, I'd like to have one of those. So that kind of put me in the citrus business. I learned how to graft, and um, I've been growing and selling citrus trees and citrus fruit ever since. That's good, and instead of having a bunch of those big trees around the desk here, we decided we'd have some pictures. When Back a few years ago when, uh, when you had a great citrus harvest before this cold snap this year. Tell us a little bit about what we have here, Steve. Right. Well, that, uh, this particular picture that we have here is a uh, Satsuma mandarin orange, which is a very cold, hardy uh, citrus cultivar. They usually survive temperatures down into the mid-teens, you know, with no problem once they get some age and some size. Uh, that's another uh, shot of the uh, Satsuma uh, mandarin orange. And there's some acreage of that being planted in South Carolina now, uh, other than mine. A lot uh, of people don't think you can grow those in South Carolina. It can be done. I've been doing it uh, quite a while. That was our harvest in 2016. Um, that was um, boxes full of oranges, and you'll notice the trees hanging with the fruit uh, in the background there. We uh, harvested uh, approximately 5,000 pounds of uh, citrus in 2016, and most of those were sold to a food co-op. Wow, I, I love the flavor of those things. They're just sweet, no, no seeds in them. They're a type of tangerine, is that right? Right, mandarin oranges are a type of tangerine, what we would commonly call a tangerine. Um, and they, they are seedless. Uh, the cuties that the kids are so crazy about now, that's, that's a form of, uh, of mandarin orange. So you don't just pull it off the plant, you have to clip it? Right, um, you can pull them off, but if you do, it's gonna pull a plug out of the end of the fruit and um, it will deteriorate fairly quickly. So it's best to take uh, snips when you go out to the citrus grove and snip them off. So you protect them a little bit from the cold and all during these cold times? Right, right. We, um, I just invested in some frost bags that are supposed to give you like eight degrees uh, frost protection. Mm -hmm. um, it's a spun bonded material that just fits down over the tree. And then we had a sprinkler system uh, in place too that we, we ran on the cold nights to uh, ice the trees down. So we have every year, right before Thanksgiving, we have a uh, cold, Southeast Cold Hardy Citrus Expo. Right. It's, uh, I started that back in, um, oh, I don't know, not t uh, 2003 or four. Anyhow, it's moved all around the Southeast. It's been as far north as Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, we've been to Alabama. Um, this past year it was in Savannah, and next year it's going to be in Valdosta, Georgia. And the Southeastern Citrus Expo does have a Facebook page. Anybody interested in attending? Yeah, and, and I've been a judge for the Citrus Expo since you started it back, right. about, what is it, about 15 or 16 years ago? I think this will be number 15 or either 16 coming up this year, and you've been a judge every year. Tony has drove countless miles all the way down to Valdosta, Georgia, I mean to uh, Thomasville, Georgia, and uh, Virginia Beach, and Alabama, and all points in between. So Tony's, oh. Tony's been a true friend of our citrus. I love the citrus. You know, I grew up, that's what you got for Christmas. It's a little box of some citrus, and maybe an apple or so, and one pair of non-holy jeans. <laughs> Yeah. That was it. That wouldn't be popular now, though. The non-holy <laughs> genes would not be popular. That's right. Well, you're going to show us a little bit how to draft citrus. Tell us about this plant type plant you have here. Okay, well, I bought two examples. A lot of you probably are familiar with seeing uh, these are called bitter lemons. Um, it doesn't get cold enough in South Carolina to even damage these. They, I've had reports of people from Connecticut and Kentucky and places like that growing these. But they make a wonderful rootstock, and if you cut into one, um, they are loaded with seed on the inside. You probably get 40, 50 seed out of one plant, and that's what we sow every fall to make, uh, to make our root stalks that we grow to graft our citrus trees onto. they are bitter now, they I They are tell bitter, you. that is the key <laughs> word. Exactly right. But uh, we're gonna do a grafting demonstration tonight, and I was telling you we have the two different forms of citrus. This is called a standard, fly, uh, standard trifoliate or bitter lemon. And this one over here is the flying dragon. Yeah, it's kind of curled up right. and uh, all it, kind of mauled. But it produces the same type of fruit, the bitter lemon. But this one, if you graft onto it, the uh, flying dragon will make a dwarf citrus tree, only get three or four feet tall. How tall are some of your citrus trees? Uh, we've got some probably eight, 10 feet tall. Wow. Yeah. 
But anyway, we're going to do the grafting demo now, and I'm going to show folks how how you. Uh, so you're you just taking some of the uh, right. uh, lateral limbs off? Right, and I did want to say too that doing um, grafting on a citrus tree or any other tree is just like doing surgery. You wouldn't want a doctor to go uh, operate on you with, uh, with, with unclean instruments, whatever. So we do take uh, some rubbing alcohol and clean our instruments good before uh -huh. we uh, graft. Okay. And uh, so the first thing we do is remove uh, any branches and get one one straight stem here, and I have to have glasses to do this now at oh, one time. that's our age, Stan. That's our age telling on us, that's, that's right. right. But we just cut it off about six, eight inches up the uh, up the stalk, of the, uh, and I take a straight edge razor blade, and we put it about halfway in, and we just tap it down about an uh, eighth of an inch down. Just split the stem. Just split the stem. Right in the middle. And then uh, in this particular instance, we're gonna do a, uh, navel orange tree, and we're gonna remove all the leaves because if you leave the leaves on there, that will have a, a tendency for it to dry out. And uh, what you wanna do with this little stem is just basically like a, a, what I call a flathead screwdriver. You wanna get a cut off of one side, then flip it over and do a cut off the other just side. Just make a V out of it. Yeah, just, just like a regular little screwdriver. And uh, you got this little piece of bark left right there, and you wanna line your, um, your cambium layers up that's the, right up under the bark is where the cambium is. That's right. where you want to get it straight. Right. And we want to just insert that there, and we want to make sure that they line up here. And that looks fairly close. And this is called poly uh, budding tape. It stretches like shrink wrap. Right. At one time, people used to have to use uh, rubber bands and that type of thing. But now, this just... Uh, binds wrap the... Wrap it around uh, there pretty tight. To hold binds it the cyan in there and you wrap it all the way up. That's gonna help hold the moisture in. Uh-huh. That way you don't have to put a bag or anything over. No you bag, just... no moisture, anything, and that's it. You just leave it there. Usually in about six weeks, uh, four to six weeks, I put these in a warm greenhouse and you can go in there and you'll see the little tiny green growth starting to grow. And at that time, we just unwrap it and, and let it grow. With the Southeast Citrus Expo, we have a little problem, and that's called citrus greening, and that's a, that keeps people from taking citrus from one area to the next. Tell right. us a little bit about that. Uh, citrus <clears throat> greening is called by, caused by a little insect called uh, citrus psyllid that came in from Asia. They think it came into Miami, Florida on a, on a flight from some country in Asia. And what happens when the little psyllid bites into some new growth on a, on a tendon uh, citrus tree? It's uh, basically like giving that citrus tree uh, would be AIDS in humans, but it's, uh, it's a disease called citrus greening in, in citrus, and it causes the fruit quality to decline, it causes the tree to decline and eventually die, and it has been wrecking havoc with the uh, citrus industry in Florida. So unless you're dealing with a uh, certified, uh, government certified greenhouse, it is illegal to bring citrus trees out of the state of Florida, like at these roadside stands that people stop at sometime. If I've, I've had people call me and say that they stopped at the agriculture station to show them that they had bought a citrus tree because it says any agriculture products pull over to the right and get them confiscated. Oh my! So, so you don't want to buy anything at some of these roadside stands in Florida and bring it out. And so even in South Carolina, there's we some have, counties. We that have two counties, I think, uh, maybe three. I know Charleston County was under uh, quarantine. Uh, Beaufort County and maybe Colleton County down on the lower uh, southeastern coast of South Carolina. But after this winter that we've had, I don't know whether we'll have a problem with citrus psyllids anymore. They probably, I would think, were wiped out by the cold. But anyway, we'll. Well, time I'm hoping will a tell. lot of insects out of there is wiped right, out from the right. cold this year. We hope a lot of them. Well, thank you, Stanley.